Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Y'all here with Droid Life. And I wanted to do a software tour of the LG G2. Now we've done hardware tours of the Verizon variant, which I have here. We've looked at at and ts version. We've looked at the international version. And we've talked about the hardware. It's, it's amazing, right? It's Snapdragon 800. You've got a 5.2 inch full HD LCD display, two gig of RAM, the 13 megapixel camera with OIS. It's got the entire package essentially in terms of hardware. Now we can argue and you know, talk all day about the design of it. If we think it's a Samsung Kang and if we do like the glossy fingerprint magnet back and all that stuff, or even the button arranger back here, but you can't argue against the hardware. What we also want to talk about though is software and let you guys sort of decide if the software on this thing is innovative, if it's overdone, if it's overwhelming, if any of it's useful. Now, LG's done a lot of stuff and I hate to keep comparing them to Samsung, but they're the only ones you can compare them to in terms of how much stuff they're adding on. Now they've got a full blown Android skin. They've also got a full blown set of suite of apps and software and features that they want to highlight and want you to get used to. So it's kind of overwhelming. We just want to show it to you, let you sort of decide what you think about it, especially if you're considering this device. We wouldn't want you to, you know, not know how to use a set of uh, features that they've included in here. So let's jump into it and see what we can find out in terms of software. Now, the first one, and it's the simplest, but it's probably the one I'm using the most. It's called Knock On. You've probably seen it. We, I think we've written about it. It's been written about probably a dozen times. But essentially, all you do is double tap on your screen and it turns it on. Okay, so if you don't like this poorly placed back button or innovatively placed, whatever you want to say there, back power button with uh, volume rocker. This sort of tapping is really, really handy and I've been using it a lot. So you can actually tap to put your phone to sleep as well or tap to wake it up. It, it really does come in handy. I don't want to compare it to Motorola's active display because that thing actually is incredibly innovative, but this is just one of those simple features that will make your life a lot easier, even though you probably never would have thought about it. So a little double tap gets you in there. Um, but speaking of those back buttons, so again, the middle one is, is your sort of power lock, and then you have volume up and down. Now, the easiest way to, to uh, access your camera is actually using volume down. So all you do is hold that for a couple seconds, feel a little vibrate, your camera will actually load up and then you could take a picture. And that's the fastest way to take a picture with this phone. So if we go ahead and lock that again, the other, the other shortcut you have is the volume up. So if you hold that for a couple seconds, you get a little vibrate and it pops up quick memo. So you can then leave yourself a little memo, get on about your day. So those are the two other functionalities or features or functions or whatever they've built into those buttons back there. So they're not just poorly placed or innovatively placed. They actually do have some function as well. Uh, let's go back to the lock switch or lock screen for a second and just show you, you've got your sort of standard icon shortcuts down here and you can customize those. Now, one thing LG does that's really cool is they allow you to customize essentially everything on this phone. So again, a swipe up like you've seen on tons of different devices will get you into these apps. So swipe up on Chrome and it takes me right into Chrome. You can do that with camera. Again, you can set those to be whatever, whatever you'd like. Uh, if we get home though, long press here gets you into your app shortcuts, widget shortcuts, and wallpapers. So if you want to change any of this stuff, you can sort of do that on the fly right down here and you can see how it looks in a preview. So you can kind of continue to decide which wallpaper you want to go with. Um, again, widgets are down here. You can scroll through these and uh, if you find one you like, you can just sort of long press on it, I believe. There we go, and drag it up to wherever you'd like. And it still keeps you in here, so again, you could keep adding things to it. And there's app shortcuts as well. If you want an app there, you just kind of grab it, drop it. So that's the easiest way to change that stuff. You can also do the pinch to zoom and add home screens, or long press and remove home screens. You know, this stuff's not necessarily new. You guys have seen this before, but it works the same on this LG device. Uh, so let's talk about the home button. Since you do have capacitive, I'm sorry, on-screen navigation buttons, not capacitive, you have on-screen, you can access Google Now with a, oops, with a swipe up and you'll see the option right there to go into Google Now if I want to do that. But they've added two other options, at least in this Verizon variant. One takes you over here to VoiceMate, which is like S Voice or Siri or what have you. And I'm not going to beat around the bush. It so far seems to be terrible and I probably won't use it or <laughs> include it in my review. But if you do like it, it is there as an option. Okay, the other cool thing though is they create a shortcut to Quick Memo. So you can get into Quick Memo wherever. Again, Quick Memo is a big deal with uh, LG. So Quick Memo allows you to draw, you know, onto sort of a note or you can draw on a screenshot since it sort of takes a screenshot as well. Now you can change the brush styles and colors and all that stuff. You guys have seen these memo apps probably a dozen times. You know how they work. 
let's get out of that. But anyways, a quick swipe up there gets you into all of those. Um, another feature they added is called slide aside. Okay, so if you have an app open, you take three fingers, yes, three of them, and you put them on the screen and swipe over to the left, it'll actually hide that app for you. Now I'm gonna open Chrome, do the same thing. So we'll do a little swipe. It'll swipe that over there, and let's just do one more for fun. How about the Play Store? Okay, so Play Store, just kind of swipe that bad boy over. And you can do up to three, I believe. I'm not sure you can go any further than that. But so those apps are actually over here on the left. So if I take three fingers again and swipe to the right, you'll see the little previews of all of those. Now I can tap and open them. And if I keep swiping, you can see you've got more in here. I think I can swipe back that way and get to the next one. Swipe again, it'll take me there, and I can swipe them all out again. You can close one if you'd like. It's kind of cool, although I'm not really sure I would personally use it all that much. The whole three finger thing just is kind of awkward to get three fingers on there and swipe around when all you have to do is long press on home and you get into the traditional Android task switcher, which also is really quick and allows you to jump into apps. So that's how you access that. Uh, one of the other big features though we've got is called Q slide. So as you can tell, there's a lot of sliding going on. We're swiping to the side, sliding, now I've got Q-Slide. So Q-Slide is, it's a sort of a multitasking app that allows you to float windows over top of whatever else you're doing. Um, you can resize these, you can change the transparency of these as well, and you can even open multiple. So like, let's say I wanna do the file manager. Pull the file manager up and make it all big, and then I wanna minimize it or tr make it transparent a little bit. You can see, you can just kind of keep doing this. And you can close this stuff, close this stuff. And it's just sort of a multitasking and it's up here and there's only a few apps you can use. Can't use everything, just sort of built in select LG apps. Now you can also hide that if you'd like. Up here in this sort of quick toggle bar, there's a Q slide button. It'll make that whole section go away in case you want more space up here. So one thing I should point out in the Verizon variant, you don't have the brightness toggle, or not toggle, sort of sort of scroller, and you also don't have the brightness scroller, which you do on the AT&T and international versions. I'm not sure why Verizon took those out, but uh, they did. They've also taken out the Wi-Fi toggle shortcut with no way to bring it back, but they've done that on a ton of devices. So if you have the AT&T or international variant, you will have a Wi-Fi button right there. Verizon's just mean and took it out. You can edit these in here and look for other ones. Like that says Wi-Fi is there but I didn't think I actually saw it. So before I completely hate on Verizon, let me check one more time. Oh, look at that, they actually did include it. Now I feel really terrible. So there is a Wi-Fi toggle, and it was probably right there while I was trashing on them. So there is a Wi-Fi toggle, yay. All right, we'll turn that back off. So uh, those are kind of the quick, I should say the, the quick and big uh, features that you'll see with with this device. So, you know, those are the big ones that they're gonna be talking about. But what I wanna also show you is some of the customization you can do. Um, but first, let's jump into settings and just look through here. There's not a lot of different stuff in here. Obviously, NFC, Beam, their own smart share Beam, MirrorCast, it's a MirrorCast device. Uh, but one thing for sure I wanna show you is in display. If you scroll down, you'll see smart screen, which uh, makes the screen not turn off as long as you're looking at it. You've got smart video, which uh, pauses if you decide to look away. But what I really like is this front touch buttons. So you can actually add on a fourth touch button if you'd like onto your device. Now the only fourth touch button you can add on is one that doesn't make a lot of sense to me and that's the notification pull down. You can also rearrange though if you want menu over here and back on this side, you can do that as well. But if you add this fourth button, it seriously all it does is bring down the notification tray and bring it back up. It's kind of, uh, kind of a waste, but it's there. So you can change that. You can also decide if you want them to be transparent or sort of have this opaque look. And I believe you can also change the color. You can, you can change the color gradient and stuff like that as well. So I've done some customization there. Uh, if we jump back out, I do want to point out that sound, there's all sorts of sound settings, which I haven't seen on many phones before that you can change. They really sort of break it down by ringtones of vibration and then just system notifications. You can change vibration patterns and stuff like that. There's all sorts of cool stuff in there. You guys will get to that. There's a one-handed operation settings menu in case the phone's just too big and you'd rather use it one-handed. There is a guest mode. I'm not going to go into that, but essentially you can set up a guest mode for a specific pattern or something so you could let somebody else access your phone. And that's sort of what we're looking at there. Um, this does run Android 4.2.2, in case you were wondering, with LG skin on top of it. Uh, if we go back home, though, and we go to menu, home screen settings, you'll see there's actually a couple of themes you can choose from. I would assume we'll see more of these eventually, but right now there's just two. 
Um, you can actually change your wallpaper in here if you'd like. You can actually change the screen swipe effect. So right now I have it on breeze and it shows you a little preview every time you tap on a new one. So let's leave it on panorama, how about? Um, you can also do your home screen looping. So if you get to the end of your home screen layout, it'll just keep looping and looping, which is kind of cool. A lot of the stuff we've seen in third party launchers, but haven't necessarily seen um, an OEM do. So that's kind of cool there. If we go into lock screen settings, you'll see more stuff. You can actually change, um, well, like I have the dew drop on there, but we could do like crystal and that'll change the animation when I swipe up. There's weather animations. You can customize the wallpaper to just the lock screen if you'd like. This is also where you change all of your quick shortcuts. So again, lots of customization going on there. Another thing that's really cool, which uh, nobody else has done, I don't believe, is uh, if you long press on an icon and then let it go and leave it in the same spot, you do get this little purple icon. And if you tap on that, you can actually change the icons. So when you're talking about changing icons, if you have some in your gallery, you can actually custom change all the icons on your LG device without actually having to go in and install a third party launcher, which is kind of a big deal. Now I don't have any, so that's not actually gonna work. Uh, but you could change it to something else if you want. Like if I wanted it to be C for Chrome, I could do that now, Chrome is a C. So that's kind of a cool, another little addition they've done there. Um, I think I showed you pinch to zoom. So that's really just a quick overview of what we're looking at with the LG G2. They've got a ton of stuff built in and uh, there's just a lot going on here. Actually, I should show you the camera just because their camera's trying to do some big stuff. Now I can't show you the OIS, but I can show you just how fast this thing is. Once it focuses, you just tap. I mean, it's an instant shutter. You hit the shutter button and bam, you've got a photo. And uh, so far, the results I've seen are really, really nice. It's taken some, some solid pictures. We're going to definitely do a full run through of how that all works. But so far, I'm really liking it. Um, in terms of video, you can shoot video. And as you're recording, you can snap photos at the same time. That's nothing new, but just want to be aware of it. You can actually pause and then pick up recording later on if you'd like. Or you can hit stop and get out of there. Um, you'll see... HDR, panorama modes, burst shots, dual camera, which uses both the front and back. Um, also, if you tap, if you have the camera up and you tap the, the volume down button, it will try to focus and then snap a photo. Got a battery meter in there. Got lots of stuff going on the camera. They really, really are proud of their camera. So it's one of those things we'll definitely look at further. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if we go into the app drawer, standard stuff. Although I will say you were gonna wanna go hide show apps and hide all of this bloatware because Verizon really did it up big time and the at t one was just as bad. Hide all that bloatware, get out of there. Look, I just hit six apps and there's probably another 15 I could probably hide. Um, and that was in menu. So there's some stuff going on in there. There's one other thing I wanted to show you guys. Oh, the bottom tray down here. So you can actually fit seven icons. You can actually move around your launcher it starts off um, by default on the right, but if you want to go with that more traditional sort of Android style in the center or somewhere else, you can do that as well. So lots of stuff. LG's really trying to do some different things, which is kind of cool. We like to see that. So this has just been an overview of software on the G2. We're definitely coming back with a full review soon. Definitely want to test out battery life on this beast. 3,000 milliamp hour, I believe it is. So uh, we'll get to that. We'll decide what we think about the buttons. Lots more coming with Droid Life. Peace.